Question number three. So read the question carefully, please. And take a minute, pause the video now, and try to solve the question on your own. If you don't want to take time off, go ahead and watch the rest of the video. You don't need to wait if you don't want to. Okay, let's look at the solution. So there are two types of loads. So far we have seen the examples for point loads. And this is the first time we see a distributed load. This little arrows that are going through the span of the six feet are called distributed loads, okay? Instead of a one single arrow uh, pointing down, we have little arrows that are distributed through all the course of a length. And to be able to solve this question, you need to convert to the distributed load to point loads. So the question says we have 400 pounds per foot, right? And what is the length of this distributed load? It's six foot. So for each feet, we have 400 pounds. For six of them, we will end up having 2,400 pounds. So pay attention to the question. If the question gives you X amount of pound per foot, you need to multiply that X by the length of that, that distributed load to be able to find the total loads. So here, in this case, we found the total loads to be 2,400 pounds. When you are converting distributed loads to point loads, that total uh, load that you just found, 2,400, applies or accepted to apply from the center of that length. What is the center of six feet? It's three feet, right? Three feet and three feet. That's why we now have a big red arrow, right? Pointing down with 2,400 pounds and it lies from the center. So we have now R1 and R2, two reactive forces pushing up and we have a active force. Now it's capital W pushing down. And where does it apply? It's from the center of that six feet. Before we move forward, I would like to talk about something that is very important. So in this question, we saw a 400 pound load that is distributed over the course of six feet. But sometimes the question is asked differently. So you have to pay attention to the type of distributed load that is given to you in the exam. If it is like this question, if it says X pounds per foot, then you need to multiply the distance by uh, weight. But sometimes the question gives you the total load. Even though the, the graphic is showing distributed load and, and there's a little arrow sticking out giving you a number, if that number is just the total load or if it doesn't say per foot, that means that the question is already gave you the total loads. Okay, pay attention. There is a tradition about that. Sometimes if it is per foot, they show it with a lowercase w. And if it is the total load, they show it with uppercase w. Always pay attention to the unit and the text, okay? So that's where your cue is. Okay, now let's go back. Again, we have to calculate the moments to find R1 and R2, right? As usual, I start with R1 and R1 is 16 feet away from R2 and W is only three feet away from R2. So I say R1 times 16 equals 2,400 times three. If you solve R1 in this question, it's 450 pounds and if you do the same thing for R2 again. It's going to be W times 13 feet because that's how much it is further away from R1. Because when we are looking for R2, our zero point is accepted to be R1. So we are trying to calculate everything towards R1. We are trying to think that R2 and W are competing to rotate this beam uh, to the point of R1. And R2 in this equation is going to be R2 times 16, going to be equal to 2,400 time, times 13 feet, right? And if you solve the, if you do the math, R2 is going to be 1950. And let's verify uh, answers here. What is R1 plus R2 should be? It should be equal to W, right? So 1950 plus 450 should be equal to 2,400. So I hope you enjoyed the videos. See you at the next video.